Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So good to see you all. Okay, today we're going to be talking about Wuthering Waves, the game that I am super excited for. As a person who has always wanted to play games that challenge him and to show his skill compared to other gamers uh, with leaderboards and with time, quick time events and things of that nature, this is something that I am extremely excited for. Now, here's the main question. You read the title, so you're probably already informed. What am I going to be in Wuthering Waves. Am I going to go the free to play route? Am I going to go to low spender? Am I going to be a battle pass enjoyer? Am I going to be a dolphin who buys every character in the game but maybe just a C0 version? Or am I going to go straight out whale? Okay. That is the question on everyone's mind. And honestly, it's on my mind too because I'm looking at this from two perspectives the fun perspective and the enjoyment from the viewer's perspective. You as the viewer will tell me based off of your views, your subscriptions, obviously just your overall watch time if you guys enjoy the content I'm putting out, right? So you'll be the ultimate decider in this. However, because I can't see into the future, I have to decide that now myself to determine from a viewer's perspective what you guys might want to see. Now, here's my thoughts on the scenario. There are some popular content creators in the space, right? Like Enviosity. He is a free to play player who prides himself on the fact that he can beat all the content in the game and develops these routes that he takes, which do admittedly take longer in terms of gameplay, but gives him more time to interact with his streaming audience. Um, and also gives him that ability to just kind of build a community because he's actually playing the game for a longer period of time, right? He's farming all those gems. He's doing all those quests. He's finding these ways to fine-tune his gameplay so that way he can become the most prepared whenever a situation occurs whether he needs materials for a character or he needs the special material summons so that way he can actually guarantee a character now <laughs> i'm not a hundred percent sure that i'm going to be streaming weathering waves because as of right now i'll be playing on an ios 14 iphone 14 pro ios would be the operating system it is not necessarily a game that is meant for a mobile device right although it does release on mobile that's more so to be inclusive to the mobile audience it is not really designed to run optimally on a phone unless you buy the high-end two three thousand dollar phones out there which then in that case sure you can run 60 frames highest settings for everything and your graphics will look amazing right in my scenario my phone is not going to be capable of doing that at the highest settings without overheating, without skipping, becoming choppy, and potentially just crashing the device altogether. So streaming is kind of off the table for me, which means I'm looking at it more from a YouTube video perspective, which let's admit it, those are two different perspectives. Being engaged with your audience on a live format like Twitch and all those other streaming services versus being able to engage with your audience through a comment section. Um, after the fact that all the criteria and content has been recorded, edited, and then put into a video all nice and neat are two different scenarios, right? The people who are coming to my content on YouTube are going to be expecting a different experience from the people who are coming on my Twitch, right? Now, I did try Twitch just to kind of give you guys a little gist of it. My name was Godman97 on that as well. And let me tell you, I did about three, four, I think it was like four or five years actually of Call of Duty mixed in with some other variable gameplay. Like I used to play uh, Fall Guy and I used to play a couple other games of that nature like Fortnite. I didn't get the kind of views that I was hoping for, right? So I determined maybe I just don't have the personality to entertain a large audience for a long period of time while also trying to hyper-focus and be the best I can be at whatever game I am playing, right? Because that's something that I want to pride myself on is trying to be the best in whatever game I'm playing so the content is also enjoyable, right? In this scenario, I am going to be paying attention to the YouTube side of things, so I don't think the free-to-play version is going to be it for me, because it creates challenges where now I have to value my time, right, and try to budget it, and if, in case you guys don't know and you haven't seen my channel before, and this is the first video you've ever seen, well, welcome to the channel. My name is Godman97. I am a variety streamer, but I am playing a majority of the gacha games out there right now that are popular, so we're talking about Genshin Impact, Honkai Star Rail, and of course, what waves azure Pramelia, whenever that comes out one 1000 percent will be getting covered by me and so on and so forth but if you're interested in other types of gameplay like fortnite call of duty and things of that nature um maybe eventually i'll get into like apex and all these other games you know maybe you'll like what you see in those scenarios but as of right now i haven't played them either way glad that you're here let's get on with what i was saying if it's your first time here 
you know, or I guess you don't know, that I am a father. I am not just a father of one or two, I am a father of three beautiful little girls. They're all relatively young, two years apart, separated in age, at three months old, two years, and four years old, right? So I don't necessarily have the time to sit down and grind and 100% the entire map of Wuthering Waves, log off, log on to Genshin Impact, 100% the entire map of the game, knock out all the quests for both of them, explore every lore detail, and just go all in on trying to make videos on both of these kind of games. These are the types of games that i will put a hardcore dedication during a certain time window in the day for me like for me my window of playing is nighttime once everyone's asleep and has gone down for the night i get two three four or five hours to play as much as i want obviously i have to sacrifice sleep in that scenario but that's the only time that i really play during the day it's my family that i'm spending time with so I'm not going to be able to put that kind of dedication into both the games, meaning I'm not going to maximize my gem outcome, meaning that I can get all the characters and weapons that I want. Even though I know that Wuthering Waves will be more free to play friendly, I still don't think it's going to be possible because I'll be putting a lot less time into that game versus when I started Genshin Impact. I, when I started Genshin Impact, I actually had just had my firstborn, just to give you perspective. So I had all the time in the world. Now I've got three kids. I don't got time for that, right? <laughs> so. Now let's go ahead and let's look after we put the free to play down, will I become a low spender? Potentially, right? I'm pretty positive that I'll be buying the monthly pass no matter what, because it's just, it's like two and a half times the amount of gems you get based off of just the simple dailies once you've knocked out all the content in the game. And it just gives you a head start so you can almost guarantee a weapon or at least a character every single banner like that's how impactful it is if you grind out the content in the beginning of the game you do all the events you get all the limited time rewards and then you sit there and you have that weekly or sorry that daily pass that comes in once you buy it um, that gives you two and a half times the amount of gems that you're gonna get just from the free-to-play stuff in those scenarios it is good, but it's still going to be tight, right? Do I want to make content on every single character in the game as a content creator? Yes. Will it be fun? Yes, for a while until I get a roster of 30, 40, and 50 characters. And now I have characters that I haven't touched in three years. Kind of like, you know, my four and five stars that I got, like Klee, uh, Deluke, and all those other characters. Jean, Mona, even though I do use Mona today. But you get what I'm saying. Those characters become bye-bye. Now, it's like, is it worth it? Was it a waste of money? Potentially, I mean, was it fun for a while like you know what i mean it's it kind of gives me that whatever so i'm kind of on the fence based off of a viewer perspective if you guys are going to enjoy that more um, than free to play or dolphin status and whale status right now let's move over to dolphin what do i think the differences are between a low spender and then a dolphin right i think a low spender is going to be somebody who goes in gets the five dollar pass and that is it right the monthly five dollar pass you get 30 days of free free mo gems we'll call them and you can potentially guarantee yourself if not every banner bare minimum every other banner that releases for a new character you can guarantee yourself that character a low spender versus a dolphin i think a dolphin would classify as you buy the weekly i keep saying weekly you buy that monthly pass and you also buy the battle pass and potentially you buy other in-game shop items as well because you know that you're going to be spending enough money that you'll have all that extra material um and then even on top of that you potentially will buy um a gem a gem purchase right you need a hundred dollar gem purchase because you were 10 wishes short so you're like eh i'll just buy that like you're not really afraid to spend a little bit of money right which is where i guess i would classify myself on genshin impact because there has been those times that i have spent a hundred dollars here a hundred dollars there to guarantee myself a character that i really wanted even though i may not have necessarily needed so i guess i would classify myself myself as a dolphin in genshin impact right i do buy the battle pass once in a while i do the monthly pass and then i have bought an occasional gem pass here or there that is almost guaranteed to give me every single character in the game at the expense of let's say a thousand dollars a year right which it's still a lot of money and if you don't have the money i don't ever recommend to spend it so just kind of keep that in the back of your mind spend responsibly but if i go that route where i'm buying that monthly pass i'm buying the battle pass and i am also spending money i don't ever spend money on the on the in-shop purchases but i'm also spending the occasional hundred dollars on the hundred dollar pass or uh, gem purchase so that way i can guarantee myself every character and potentially weapon in the game so i can do showcases not necessarily 
guides i'm not a guide maker i'll never be a guide maker learning the ins and outs of every character is fun real time looking at the numbers is not something that i ever find enjoyable so i'll never be your guide for that i apologize if that's what you're looking for but it's going to be more of the pleasant um visual experience versus the knowledgeable experience about the numbers and the inner workings of their kits I'll know a basic understanding and enough to get the max damage potential, but if you want me to explain it in detail, why it works, when it works, how it works, what's the best scenario, best teams, best comms, best artifacts, when to use these characters, in what order, uh, you're probably not going to get as much detail as you're hoping for me. Then there's whale status, right? Now, from a viewer perspective, I think both the low spender and I think the dolphin status are going to be good, right? Now, the whale status is where I'm a little bit iffy and I think that it kind of falls off because when you become a whale, from a viewer's perspective and even your own perspective as the individual who owns these characters, sometimes the content becomes too easy and it's not necessarily fun anymore, right? Is what I would normally say. But we already know that Wuthering Waves is one of those types of games that even if you highly invest and you get C6, R5, or whatever the acronyms are for that game, we know that there's going to be content in that game that is going to be so difficult you can still be killed in one or two hits, and you genuinely have to be good at the game by dodging and being strategic with when you attack. You can't just mash the buttons as much as you want and you win everything because you spend money, right? It values your time and it also gives you the ability to clear the content faster but also having higher damage numbers um, along with it. So I don't know. In this game, it's unique because if I was going to say I was going to try to be a whale in any other game, I'd be like, it's not even worth it. You're going to kill everything and you're going to have no fun vis a vis Genshin Impact, right? Like you can see right now, I've been showcasing my two strongest teams, Ayaka and Nuvalet, and I'm killing everything one or two hits. It's not even fun anymore. It's just how high can I make the score go at this point, right? So that's what I'm basically saying. In, in a game like Genshin Impact, it's not necessarily as fulfilling, but in Wuthering Waves, it's not as bad and damning if you end up having some C6 R5 characters from money spent, right? But at the same time, it's a large chunk of money. You're talking about $1,500, we'll call it on average, for a C6 R5. Um, and then maybe you are enjoying it less because it is being done in one or two minutes versus that four or five, and you're not necessarily getting fulfilled from the combat. So for me personally, I think I'm going to fall in the realm of a low spender and a dolphin. I'm probably going to lean towards dolphin status because I want to be able to get every character, potentially, right? And showcase them damage-wise, what's the strongest they can be with whatever characters and teams I have built. Because that's what I like doing. You guys know from my channel, I don't give you guides, but I give you damage showcases with whatever characters I have built up. And that's kind of where I want to do with Weathering Waves Justice. At the same time, I'm not 100% sure. I don't think I'm ever going to be a whale. If I'm if I'm being honest, I think whale status for me is just out of the question because I can't afford two or three thousand dollars being spent every month or two. I just there's no way I could do that, and I'd make my family go broke. I'd I'd, I'd have to forfeit my mortgage on my house, and you know I'd lose my car. We'd become homeless. I've got a family of three. It's a single income household. There's no way I can be a whale. So I think I'm going to be either a dolphin or a low spender and just get that monthly pass, or I'm going to get the battle pass, monthly pass, and then maybe an occasional uh, gem purchase here or there. We'll see. I'm not 100%, but I'm like 85% leaning in one of those two directions. You let me know in the comments below if you are excited for Weathering Waves, if you'll be playing it, and what your story is. Are you going to be free to play Low Splendor, Dolphin, or are you going to be a whale? Speaking of which, I want to give a huge shout out to FS Coterie, a gentleman that I met on Genshin Impact who has C6 R5 of some of the best characters in the game. We're talking C6 R5 Raiden, Nahida. Arlequino and so on and so forth. He's got an ever-growing list of C6R5, and I know he's aiming for Columbina and the Capitino. I think his name is Capitino or, or the Captain. Next, um, he streams on Twitch. He's a huge Coterie fan from Day to Live, and he is also a huge Mine fan from Akamega Kill. And if you ever watched either one of those shows, I have personally, and I like both of them. You know that those characters are pretty cool, and he has some pretty good tastes, huh? But um, yes, he was the guy who showed me and allowed me to show off his C6 R5 Arlequino um, and one of the clips I showed previously at the beginning. And he's a pretty cool guy. He likes to stream. He has his own VTuber of those two previously mentioned characters from those two shows. Uh, really cool guy. So if you wanted to support him and just give him a little thank you for letting me showcase the C6 R5 Arlequino, go ahead and give him a like, a follow, and a subscription. 
And I also want to give a huge shout out to all the other co-opers who allowed me to join their worlds and vice versa and did some damage showcases of their characters and allowed me to do damage showcases of mine as well. That was really awesome and I appreciate everything that they had allowed. So go ahead and give them some likes, comments, subscriptions if you could find anything on their channels as well. Um, pretty cool community we got building here so I like the Genshin Impact community. Uh, with that being said, I think this is going to mark the end of the video. Just know that Wuthering Waves is coming. I'm probably going to be a dolphin is what I'm honestly leaning towards. I'll be spending maybe 20, 20, 30-ish dollars a month, right? Nothing crazy, but that's going to be something that allows me to have all the characters so you guys can see the best damage showcases and we can get some more consistent videos popped out for you guys. So it will be on mobile, but I will make sure I have my phone in front of the AC. You know, I've got the room cold and chilled. I've got the phone case off so it doesn't overheat easier. And I've got the highest graphic settings possible so I can ensure that you guys have a smooth viewing experience. I'll, allow me to handle that. I promise you, I won't let you down. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm excited for Weathering Waves. I can't explain it. I hope you guys are too, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next one. Ad Astra, happy task.